the reason you might not be making that money that you're looking for is because you do not know who to sell to. And most people always confuse sales with marketing. And some other people confuse marketing with advertising. So in this video, I'm going to try to help you as a photographer to figure out what sales is and what marketing is and how you could use content creation to actually make those three things happen for you. So the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you create content that is shareable. Things, contents that people would love to share anytime. Beautiful videos, beautiful, maybe a collection of all the photographs that you make. Something that it's so good visually that people cannot ignore it. They just want to share it. That alone would actually create awareness for you. What will happen is that the more people share it, the more people get to know, oh, this guy's the kind of photographer. I love this kind of work, right? I know you've seen, um, or you've always, you've, most of the time shared videos on your Instagram story, whatever platform that you use, and you didn't even know the photographer before. You just saw the work and you really just intrigued you and you loved it and you put it out there, right? You just shared it. You need to create content that is visibly admirable, right? Something that you would love, something that holds people's attention, something that people can share, shareable content, right? So, like I said, it could be like a BTS of you making the photographs and you adding the photographs in it. It could just be a collection of all the beautiful photographs that you've made. It could be like, you know, when we do like recap of um, the month, we say a picture dump for September. You could do like a picture dump of all the September beautiful photographs you've made. But it has to be something that both the visual, like the picture themselves, the video, maybe the sound really looks good that some other person without knowing you loves it so much that they want to share so that would actually create awareness for you people get to see you people get to know you people get to know what you do people get to like this guy is really doing something great and then because of the shareable content they will now click on your profile and then check you out right and that's why it's important for you to understand that you shouldn't be using your Instagram just as a place you post photographs to show that you do work. It's not a place you should be updating people like, oh, I'm a photographer that is always working. No, it should be a place where you curate it because when people click on that viral content, when people click on that shareable content that they liked, they will come to your profile. And when they come to your profile, what they see on your Instagram would be the reason whether they will stick or they will just go, right? You've seen people have viral moments and that was it. Nothing happened after that. And you also see other people have semi-viral moments. But when people come there and they realize that, oh, there's a lot to learn from this person. There's a lot to see from this person. And they stick around. So you need to understand that that first set of content is just for awareness. It's for you to be able to put it all out there so that more people can get to know you, right? More people can get to know about what you do. You do not sell on that content. You do not say, my next customer is on your feed, share it. You do not say, hire me today, this is what I did. That one is not for selling. That one is just to create awareness. It's for more people to get to know about you. It's for more people to know that, oh, this guy exists. Because you know what? If you do not exist in people's minds, they don't even know you. How would they even hire you in the first place? So you need to get into people's faces. The more people you get into their faces, the better for you. So that's why people do sponsored ad because they want to increase their reach. And one of the ways to even increase your reach other than doing the sponsored ad is for you to create shareable content like I mentioned. So once people now share the content, when they come to your profile, it's curated. It's something that looks like what you want to be hired for. The second form of content you should create is the one that helps build trust. You know, the first one was the one that brings people in. A lot of people see it, they loved it. It went viral. People were sharing shareable content and now they are coming in. For you to keep them, you need to be able to build trust. And for you to build trust, you need to build a set of content that is showing your expertise in something. So this content is that you are educating people about what you do, about the process your process, not every other person's process. If you work with me, this is what we do. So let's say you are a fashion photographer and for someone to hire you, the person must come with a stylist, must come with a makeup artist, must come with a hairstylist. Talk about your processes. So this is where I come from, ideation. 
to the deliverables, right? And everything that happens in between that process. So in those kind of videos, it's longer form content. You, what you're doing is that you're telling people what to do. Like when I make content about headshot and I say, do not wear colorful clothes that will take all the attention of your face because the most important thing in a headshot is your face, not the clothes you wear. That content is not for me to go viral with it. That content is for me to build trust with the people that have chosen to follow me. So you need to think about those kind of content that would help you as a brand in whatever aspect that you do, right? Let's say you are a wedding photographer. You think about what are the things that wedding, that the bride, groom are always asking questions about when it comes to wedding. And you create your content around that, answering those kind of things, how you do it. So let's say you go for a wedding. Your ideal um, process is when you go for a wedding, you guys make photographs of the um, beginning of the serial people making up and all of that. You make the first look photograph. You have to explain why those things are important. You have to explain why you, time is needed for you to be able to create those kind of content or kind of images and all of that. You need to be able to share your processes of how you go from this normal day of a wedding to creating this magnificent picture of the bride and the groom. What that does for you is that people that would want you to photograph them on your wedding, when they come to the page, those contents are the content that will help them build trust. Know that, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. I like the way he's doing. Maybe you are someone that goes with the wedding, with a playlist that you have spoken to the clients about before the wedding there. So you go with your sound bar and it is the music that they say they love during the consultation stage. So you just put on your sound bar, drop the music, which is actually the music that the clients like. You made a playlist for that wedding. So you're sharing how you make your clients feel ease because weddings are very strenuous. Weddings are very, people are full of nerves, right? Some people are anxious. Your ability to calm anxious bride down and make them smile and make them make photographs. Those are the kind of content you should put out. Because when someone else who might actually be struggling with anxiety, when someone else who might actually be suffering from people not getting them when it comes to the choice of music, um, you know when you see someone play music and say, oh, dance, because they are trying to get the client to, to be, maybe get out of a certain mood, all right? So you shouldn't do that. Your job is, because you've had conversation with them about the kind of music they're like, it shows the intentionality in what you do. It shows that you will pay attention to details by coming to the wedding with your soundbar but playing their music, making a whole playlist for them. So when you share that process with your clients, when they come, the ones that will hire you, when they come to see it, they would love it. Let's talk about if you're working with other vendors at the wedding. If you talk about how you make it easier for other vendors to get their content for other vendors to get the best out of the day too. That means an event planner that is looking at the video be like, okay, this guy can play with the team. So I will hire this guy because he will not be some guy that will just be about making their stuff other than other people, right? You are trying to create content that people, when they watch it, when they read it, you don't have to make videos if you don't like videos. You can actually write a blog, right? If you like writing, for me, I love writing, so I could just easily just write a blog about it. If you put that one consistently out there, people would get to like it, read it, or watch it. What that particular video would do for you is to build trust. People will get to know that this guy knows what he's doing. I can work with this guy. It's, it increases your likability and your ability to be memorable in the minds of the people, which are very two important things that you need if you're trying to build clientele. You need to be likable. You need to be memorable. For you to do that, these are the kind of content that you create for you to be able to be likable in the hearts of the people that see it and memorable in the minds of the people that would seek you out to hire you. Even when they are not having a wedding now, maybe in the future they have a wedding, they will now say, yo, I should hire this person, right? And the third form of content that you should do is the one we call call to action. That one, you're going straight to the point you sell. You don't sell anything in the one for awareness. You don't sell anything in the one for trust. But in the one you are trying to do 
call to action. I want to sell. That is very simple. Hi, my name is Mayor. I'm a wedding photographer based out of these. And if you're looking to have a wedding, I am your guy. On my link below or on my bio is a link to have a, a session with me. Then we talk about how to hire me. So you sell whatever you do. You sell your headshot. You sell your portraiture. You sell your commercial work. Whatever you do, that's the point where you tell people to hire you. So this video, when some people see it, they know exactly that you're not trying to entertain them. You're not trying to teach them. You're not trying to build trust. So it makes the selling easier because with the first set of content, which was awareness, a lot of people know you. With the second set of content, which is to build trust, people now see the reason why you should be the one. And now with the third form of content, which is now call to action, it's easier for them to buy from you because they know you, because they trust you, and because they like you. So when you're thinking, ah, nobody's hiring me, my question to you is, have you done all of these three forms of content that I've talked about here. Because it's easier to just say, nobody's hiring me. It's the easiest thing to, to push the blame to someone else. But you're not looking inwards at what you're actually doing as a business person. Because most photographers all the time, they think that we are making, we are photographers now, we are making pictures. But you are a business person. You should think like a business person, not just like a photographer. Let the photographer brain Talk about, do the content around awareness. Let the business brand, the marketing brand, the one that will help you build trust, deal with the content that will help you with the trust and let the salesperson in you do the content that will do for the call to action where you ask people to hire you. And once you do that, I can promise you, I can put my money on it, you're going to land those clients. And you need to understand that these things are there for people to do. You don't do it once and say, oh, may I didn't find results. I've had a lot of people in my clarity session, in my mentoring program. Some of them say, I didn't get the result. I'm like, how many times did you do it, right? Because you can do an awareness content today. Instagram shows it to 500 people. And the next day, it doesn't show it to any other person. So you, would you say, because you made the first one, that out of the 500, you should have had people. Your job is to keep creating them. Your job is to keep showing up. Your job is to keep building this set of content, knowing that every time I'm going to make content, I'm going to make three kinds of content. I'm going to create one for awareness. I'm going to create one for trust building. And I'm going to do the third one, which is call to action. Do it consistently. Because the more you do it, the better you are at it, right? It's like riding a bicycle. You don't ride a bicycle on the first day and lift your two hands. Come on now. <laughs> it cannot happen. The first day you're trying to ride a bicycle, bro, you are trying to find balance so that you don't fall, right? You're not even thinking about doing shakara, putting your two hands in the air and doing the pedals with your two legs. You can't do that. So why would you think that the first time that you just do a video for, let's say, awareness, the, the video would go viral? Who told you that? So these things take time and the time can be shortened by you doing more. Let me say it again. It, everything in life takes time, but time can be shortened by the number of times you do it. So you don't have to do it for 10 years. You don't have to do it for two years. You don't have to do it for one year. You can compile all of the things. Let's say you would have, should have done 40 videos by the end of the year. If you put out 40 videos in one month, you will have the result you have, should have had in one year. So you need to know that you are responsible for the people that come to you. You need to know that you are responsible for either having the client or not having the client. And if you do all of that, you still don't have the client, then the problem is your portfolio. We should talk about portfolio in the next video. My name is Mayor Otu. I'm the Clarity Coach. I help photographers build structures and frameworks that help them build profitable business. I've done that over the last five years with photographers in different genres of photography. They started up from nothing in up to millions of naira and thousands of dollars for the ones that are not in Nigeria. That's what I do. I help because I think about these strategies. I think about these tactics that help you execute on these strategies. And I'm telling you, if you take these things I'm putting out to you right now for free, this is for free. If you do them, 
you'd come back and tell me, you, Mayor, it worked. Because I, I can always put it, success can be replicated. If it cannot be replicated, it's a fluke. Bro, for me to be able to get the successes that I've had for myself, for other people, other photographers, in fact, I even had like two people that are fashion entrepreneurs inside my uh, mentoring program. For me to deliver the kind of results that they are getting means that these things work. But for it to work, you need to be disciplined and resilient when it comes to putting in the work. So I hope you have the best time watching this. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go do that right now. I hope you got value from this video. Thank you again. See you in the next one.